Um, she's not feeling well at all, so she can't come, but um, her spirit is with us. Um, so we are going to talk today a little bit about creating digital libraries of read -alouds. And I was so excited to see this one, um, one chart over here that talks about read -alouds and teacher-librarian co collaboration, because that's what this presentation is going to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I have a tendency to talk really fast. I'm going to try to slow down, but you can wave your hand if I start zooming. So our presentation is Librarian Support of Teachers and the Creation of Virtual Libraries of Effective read -alouds. So what we're hoping to do this afternoon is just give you some ideas about something that we might all work together to create for, um, for our children here in Micronesia. As you all know, um, it's really hard to build collections here. Um, books are really expensive. Getting them shipped is really, really hard. Um, I had the joyful experience of working with Erica for a bit, and Erica has done a fabulous job of building a collection with so many great books. But it's hard, right? It's really hard. And then, okay, let's say that we get some really great books, and we pay to have them shipped. What happens? Right? Like there's that smell of mold. Like everything's wet all the time. So they don't last long. So we're talking about sustainability. I saw that over there too. So here's like a big problem. So we're trying to figure out what solutions might be possible. Um, and so this is how this idea sort of formed. Um, I had taught children's literature for years when I was at the University of Wisconsin. Um, and then I came and um, again had the pleasure of working with Sylvia Henry, who is a professor in teacher prep at National. And we both discovered we love children's books and we love, we're both kind of actresses. And so we love the drama that teachers can bring to the reading of really good books. Um, so. We said, okay, we love good reader lives, we love good books, we know it's really hard, and we both love technology, and especially Sylvia, she always has her iPad filming everything. So what about if we film these read alouds and build digital libraries? That might be a, a solution. Um, and so one of the things we had done in our class was we had our students do read alouds and we filmed them, and then they would do the filming. Pretty good, right? 
Um, so we were just thinking about that and um, how we always think about what makes good, good children's literature, what makes it high quality. And this is coming from a book I used when I was in Wisconsin, um, Children's Book in Children's Hands. But just some of the things we were looking for um, when we were advising our students to pick good books. They expand awareness, um, those books provide um, enjoyable reads, they tell the truth, or truths, they're honest. Um, they have quality, the wording, the words are magical, the pictures are wonderful. And um, it has integrity, and I mean like it all comes together, it works together as a whole. Um, and it's culturally authentic. So there's not stereotypes, there's um, not a tendency to overlook really important nuanced aspects of the culture. So, there we had our plan. We were gonna look at good books, we were going to film them. So again, the book that we decided, and I'll send this one around to, um, to sort of practice and do a demo so we could present that for you. So the next couple of clips are, um, is documenting the process we used in um, creating these um, read-alouds that we are uploading to um, YouTube. Uh, and the first one that you'll see is Tatiana. And I actually sent an email to the author about Tatiana. Tatiana is from the Mortlocks. So she translated um, the book and she's re going to be reading it in her home language. And that's something else we wanted to think about is we know that um, instruction should be in the home language in the younger grades. So you get these you know, quality books, they're in English. So how do you incorporate that into your practice? How can librarians support teachers doing that? So you'll see Tatiana reading this um, book. Oh, sorry, I forgot this slide. Uh, I was getting back to uh, translation. Translation is really tricky. It's hard. Um, but just some ideas to think about. It's personal. So when you're thinking about it, it's interesting because when Tatiana was translating her, the book into her language, she got on Facebook and said, how do you say fish spirit woman in Japanese? You know, but really taking the time, like, okay, what's the word? And what does it mean like to my community? So thinking about it as a personal experience and related to that is you want to um, recreate the sense and style. To do it word for word, that's not really going to translate the beauty of the book. Um, so like getting a feel for what's the author saying in the way that the author is saying it. Um, and you need to practice that's something else too. And you'll see in these um, video clips like where they are in the practice, in the process of being practiced and doing these read-alouds. Um, and leave room for teacher commentary. It's really great when teachers are doing read-alouds to do that connection with the students. So here's Tatiana um, practicing her read-aloud. And I love her voice, it's such a great job. I 
Allah ang atin. And he was telling me that he was going to be a good person. He was going to be a good person. He was going to be a good person. He has the translation on her lap. And she's kind of, she kind of has it memorized, but not quite. And you are a man. What's the name of the Kabunso? Alon Kesi. Alon Asakamu. And let them. Alon Kesi. Alon Master Shipka Vishucha Gatom Kusha. Go. Inapata. Mita Ekeya Yuvelu Kata Mwam Zedfu. Mita Vaya Gorungan Yei. Boi Ipo Alfara Hara Alfara Yei. Usunja Alfara Nevan Alon Stipka. So she's in the process of feeling really comfortable with this. Now I'm going to show you the final. So this is the process of filming the readouts. You'll see the filmmaker Jacks and then she's going to wash it more. There's flash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. But again, so um, very simple, just using a phone to, to create these videos. Um, so we have a YouTube channel, and we is all of us, the teachers of FSM, and um, you can get to it. Uh, but first I'll tell you why to get to it. Um, it's free, uh, downloadable, widely used. And there, I don't know if you've been able to explore it, there are great Moodle Labs now available online. Have, have folks looked at them or are you using them? There are there are just incredible ones, and I needed to come up with some video, with some book readings for a lesson, and we didn't have the books. I went to YouTube, found great readings of those books, was able to use them in the classroom, it worked out perfectly. There's our channel, on our channel, so please subscribe. And um, this is what it looks like. Again, so we have a video of the teachers when um, they were doing their read-alouds for their class project. Um, so here's some suggestions um, that we, um, uh, Sylvia and I were thinking that maybe you could help us with. Um, if you could hold mini workshops with teachers to like re-emphasize you know, what a quality book looks like. And again, I know I've been on the libraries on all four islands and there are some wonderful gems in the collections. And then there's some books that aren't gems. So um, how to identify the gems we do have um, and then maybe holding film marathons. We would say, okay, this teacher's going to be, for example, there was a bunch of teachers in Yap from the neighboring islands. They were there for five weeks. They could come maybe to your wonderful library. I love the Yap library. And they could film the gems that um, Erica has in the collection, post them to YouTube, and all of a sudden those books are available for everyone. Um, and this book, the films could be done in Waliyan, Lithuanian, and they can be done in English and Pashtun, and they can be done in all these languages. And all of a sudden, we have this huge library of great books in all these languages. Um, and then, of course, continue to build those print collections. Um, but it's great so that people know what you have. For example, Harvesting Hope. I know you have a copy of Harvesting Hope, and I love it. And one of my favorite books. Um, letting everybody know, like, oh, we have that book. You know, if you want to come and film it for your classroom. This is our film crew. Um, so to put this together, we this is our crew of folks and everyone um, participated. They took sections of that book, translated into their home language, practiced, read it. Then we also have um, the filmmaker and um, we have a guest, uh, Lester King, and um, joined our group. So anyway, with that, I um, just want to open it up. Anyone have any questions? Um, if you've thought about doing things like this, if you've already started these types of projects? Yes. Are there any restrictions You know, that is such a wonderful question. And I was just going to send an email to the author, because we've actually corresponded. I was like, oh, I have your book online. I thought, oh, do we have any copyrights? Um, and I need to find out for sure. There are so many books online. I think it falls under that educational use. Um, I'm almost positive, but I'm not completely sure. And I have very little pockets, so I can't be sued. But my, my assumption is it's under um, educational use. Fair use, yeah, thank you. I, I would just say, 
please investigate. Yes, yes, yes. And never, 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 never use anything by Disney. They don't care if you have no money. No, but we Disney will yet. sue the everything off of you. And you're pretty safe with me about the no Disney. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Okay, I mean, great. they're cute and kids like them, but... Oh, well, yeah. At, at Wisconsin, it, there was a big no-no. Um, but again, so these are good things to think about. And um, I will, um, you know, ferret this answer out. Um, that's a great question. Are teachers doing a lot of read-alouds in the classroom? When you go to visit, do you see? Because I know, I know, Lester, I know you have your Thursday afternoon things, and they seem very popular. I've been wanting to talk to you about that, actually. I think one of the tricks is we need to coordinate the timing between the story hour and when they have their classes. And it's a half an hour taxi ride, but it's, I, I think it would be a natural, and we're trying to do more service learning, so let's look into that. kids all over, then they're all in English. And then I thought, but you know what, like, it's meant for a first grader, um, and um, what can we do? And then when I started this translation project uh, with the work-study students, or something else I was interested in, this, the work-study students loved it, and so we have that capability. Um, so then, yeah, all of a sudden we expand what we have in the vernacular. Okay? If you have any questions, please come see me. Um, hopefully, Sylvia will be able to join tomorrow, but we'll be around all week. Um, and we would love to make this happen. So, um, hopefully, I'll have the answer to are we going to get sued by the time we have the dinner on Friday? All right, well, thank you guys so much, and thanks for everything you do for our kids and our communities. Thank you.